H combines over here. So you can see that, uh, and when they share electrons, obviously all the orbitals, then this will become full. So the octet is complete. Eight electrons in total. Octet complete. So this is what uh, sp3 hybridization is. Now all the bond angles in sp3 hybridization are 109.5 degrees, which give it the sp3 hybrids a tetrahedral shape. SP3 hybrids have a tetrahedral shape because of this bond angle of 109.5 degrees and all these bonds they are called sigma bonds sigma bonds remember that they are called sigma bonds yeah they are called sigma bonds now let's look at sp hybridization sp2 hybridization in sp2 hybridization we have three sp2 hybridized orbitals yeah remember and we have one p orbital alone one lonely p orbital and three sp2 hybridized orbitals now what happens is that in this case these three will form a sigma bond so for example again let's say um let's say this is uh this is actually yeah this is what the shape looks like but so let, let's say this is carbon yeah and here we have a hydrogen over here, a hydrogen over here, another carbon which is sp3 hybridized over here, yeah, and uh, just a second, let me draw a more accurate diagram. This is a carbon atom, another carbon which is sp3 sp2 hybridized, sp2 hybridized carbon over here, and this is also attached to H. And H. Just a second, I, I'll just erase this diagram. Sorry about that. So let's say we have two sp2 hybridized carbon atoms over here. So yeah, you can see that both of them are actually the same shape because obviously both of them are forming three bonds uh, this carbon forms one two and three this carbon forms one two and three so now these are sigma bonds yeah these are sigma bonds and these are the sp2 hybridized orbitals the hybridized orbitals will always form sigma bonds now the fourth orbital of both carbon atoms will overlap because you know that there is a fourth p there is a p orbital there this is a p orbital this carbon had the black carbon had and the other carbon will also have this p orbital so they will overlap together to form another bond now this bond is called a pi bond so all the lonely p orbitals form the pi bonds and all the all, all the hybridized orbitals form the sigma bonds this is what you need to remember so the pi bonds is actually sideways overlapping This is, you can see that they are sideways, this is sideways overlapping. So actually I will explain sigma and pi bonds in a while after I've explained the other, other, the SP hybridization, but you need to first remember sigma bonds. Okay. First remember sigma bonds. Now SP hybridized orbitals. So SP you remember There were two lonely p orbitals and two hybridized p or, uh, sp2 sp orbitals sp sp p and p so the sp and sp you know will overlap to give sigma bonds yeah will overlap with the hydrogens to give six sigma bonds so this is a sigma bond this is a sigma bond yeah now the other uh, the other p orbitals will overlap with something to give the pi bonds yeah so we will talk about now we'll talk about sigma bonds and pi bonds so let's take sp3 for example okay so sp3 whenever there are sing, all single bonds are sigma bonds so first thing you need to remember is that all single bonds are sigma bonds single bonds are sigma bonds so since we have all single bonds over here these are called single bonds now this is actually the wrong shape because what we need to draw is something tetrahedral. So now I will be explaining the wedges and dashes to you. This goes like this. Then this goes like this. Then this goes like this. And then this goes like 
this. So you must be thinking what is a wedge and what is a dash. So a wedge is basically